Hi, it's Linda from Linda's Paperworks, and today I wanted to talk about the unfortunately named junk journal. Unfortunately, its name gives you the idea that it's just a piece of trash or it's not anything of value, and I don't think that's true. I think that, um, well, Natasha from Treasure Books has the right idea about it, that they are indeed treasure books, that you put your thoughts and your artistic effort and your energy into making a beautiful journal or something that is pleasing to you and that you can um, share with other people. So I'm, today I wanted to show you some of the books that I've made and hope that you get inspiration from them. Thanks so much for watching and we'll get right to it. I was watching a video by Marguerite Miller the other day and she was talking about art journals and she had four kinds that she was um, listing and had distinctions between the, the four. And one of them was a scrapbook, which she described as um, a, it tells a story. It tells it has a timeline, and it goes through, say, a trip, for instance. You, you arrive at your trip, you see these sites, and you ride back home, or, or whatever. Or a wedding, or perhaps um, a time in your life. Maybe your senior year in high school, you did a, a scrapbook of that. And you would have mementos in it, and you might have... Um, little written synopsis of what you thought of something or how you felt about something. And um, many times a scrapbook is um, something you share with other people. You show them your scrapbook, or it used to be that way. I don't know if people do so much scrapbooking now. And There was a time back in the 80s, 80s 90s, I guess, where scrapbooking was really a big deal. And there was a whole industry developed about it um, and companies like We Are Memory Keepers uh, started based on making scrapbooks. And a lot of that, a lot of their items and things are still used by people who make scrapbooks still or who have evolved into doing other things, but they still use the tools and the supplies that they, these companies make. Then another type that she talked about was altered books. And that's taking a printed book of um, some kind and either cutting out the, the pages of it, which is what I did to this journal. I kept the first couple of pages here and then went into um, the pages that I created and added to it. Or you can keep some of the pages and just cut out, say every, um, keep two and cut out four or some formula that you work out where you have fewer pages in the book and then you can add um, artistic things or you can put things like um, mementos and things in it, or you can you just make it an art book where you collage into it, and you can um, do, make it a, a, a multimedia book where you have painting and, and collage and various things in it. Then there are glue books, and these um, glue book, technically glue books are books, scrapbooks of some kind, maybe a, a pad of um, watercolor paper, for instance, and you glue things to the pages of that. And maybe it's things you cut out of magazines or other books, and you glue those things into the into the book in a way that is appealing to you. And it's it's an art book in that way. Maybe you have a page that's all watches, for instance, and you you arrange them in a, in a pleasing way on that page. Or it's pretty women, then you have a page full of that. Or it can, uh, whatever you want, maybe all red things or all things made out of uh, wood or baskets or it, whatever you want to glue, whatever you enjoy gluing. And people who do glue books, um, I've heard comment that it's very relaxing to do. They maybe fussy cut out items, which means you cut around, um, say, a, a bird or something, and you have those things that you glue down. And then there are junk journals. Now, just what is a junk journal? It's very hard to describe, I think, because it can be a scrapbook, or it can be a glue book, or it can be an art book, or it can be an altered book. It can be whatever you want it to be. You can make it into a journal that you write in. It can be a daily writing journal that you create, but you made it from um, laser paper that you coffee dyed, for instance, or you make it from old junk mail and you glue another piece of paper over it so that you have a space to write or you glue other things in there with it. It can be, as I said, just anything you want it to be. 
And I have a few examples here on the table that I think I can show how they're crossovers to some of the other kinds of books that she was talking about. This book, as I said, started out as an actual um, printed book, and I cut the pages out of it and then added, sewed my own signatures into it and made it a very chunky journal. <laughs> so that is this book. And I've, I've got lace and things glued into it. And um, some of it I have written in, like I have written about events. This one, this page um, somewhere here. Well, there it is. This was about our 30th wedding anniversary and what we did on that day. I wrote just a little bit on, on this about it. And um, other things are just like this pocket has some items in it that remind me of a, a time I made a, a gift for a friend with watercolors and this a, a tag off of something I bought. I don't even know what that was anymore, but I thought it was cute with a little bird on it. And so I kept that. So it, it's a place to collect things that I light and to be somewhat artistic in creating designs and things. This pocket back here holds some tickets from a, or a ticket from a classical series music performance at the Dallas Symphony Orchestra back in 2002. So that's just a little something I want to keep and so I have it tucked in there. There's a um, card of buttons that were my mother's and I just I think they're interesting. Um, just various things, little pockets here and there. So this one is pretty full in places, but there's still a lot of blank pages in it. This was a um, menu from a, a tea house that my friend and I went to one time and had afternoon tea. It was very fun. I, and I wrote um, a little bit about what we did and, and how, how we enjoyed it. And so I had that clipped in here. Um, just various things, whatever, whatever I felt like putting in here, I put in it. So that is that kind of journal, which basically started as an altered book, but it's everything, anything in there. Then this book I made from scratch and, um, I'm trying to remember what I based it on. I think it's an envelope. Yes, I think it's an envelope that I started it on. And this was a, a book, sorry, that noise there. I made a very chunky um, tassel on the, on the back of it. The tassel is too big for the book, really. But it's got um, a shell that we picked up on the beach and a sun, some beachy kinds of things, and then some other sparkly things in there. And I put, used um, texture paste to make the fish on the cover. And I still haven't put the uh, title of the book, which I think is gonna be Come Back to the Sea. And in this book, I told our, about our trip to Gulf Shores in October of 2021. It's not told in a linear manner. I just wrote about some of the things about memories, some of our travels, um, things I picked up on the beach, um, saw some dolphins from our condo. This I just left that way because I thought it was pretty with the gold on it. Um, wrote about something that happened what we ate, um, we do a lot of eating when we are on vacation. And this little um, tag I wrote about something that happened. My, my brother and sister-in-law had seen a, a young man that caught a, a large shark on his uh, fishing reel and they were all excited about that. I wrote about it, I wasn't there to see that personally. But I just made this with a little, like a postage stamp almost tag to go in here. And then behind this, the top part is a pocket and I have something slid up under there. Oh, just a, just a little thing about, it's a, it was an ad about Gulf Shores or the Alabama coast. And um, just, I made it into a little place to write something on, on that. But I used a lot of items that I picked up while we were there. Things like the mullet wrapper is a newspaper there. And I used some of the stuff out of it to make these pages. So in that way, it's kind of a scrapbook of, of mementos, but it's also a junk journal because I was using um, basically things that might be thrown away, ephemera. 
And that needs to be glued back down. So anyway, that is um, the kind of journal this is. And um, this is even, we stopped at a convenience store and my husband bought up one of these Bernard's pralines that we split and I kept the package. But then I, I created this um, kind of art piece, I guess you might call it, of what it might have looked like a little bit with pecans in it. It was quite good, by the way. So, anyway, that is, um, and there's still room for another trip in this book. So, that is an example of a junk journal made from an envelope. And this junk journal started out to be a daily, December daily for a Christmas thing. And um, it's made with a file folder. It has a very soft spine in it. And I used fabric on the inside and the outside. And then this is um, a paper napkin that I glued on with Mod Podge to the page for decoration. And just um, cutouts, the ribbon, sequins, writing about. I wrote about some, some of the days. This is a very mixed journal because I started out as a December daily writing, down, writing the days, what I did or something about it. And then pretty soon, it was Christmas already, and I was too far behind. So it kind of morphed into something else where, well, this was still, I'd gone and bought some stamps and had examples of them. Did some artwork there. That's, that was a stamp that I watercolored the brown on it and then made the, drew the, um, the lead, the pine needles. It was a tag off of something I bought. Um wrote about our Christmas day a little bit. This was a napkin from John's niece's. Brought out the napkins when she served hot cider. And then I, over here, I started doing some collage pages based on prompts. And I did several pages of those. And that was, that's fun too. Just making art pages there. Then this page was about a little snow we had. And then back to more of those um, collage pages. There's some more. And that just has some stuff stuck in there. There's my first junk journal when I was a kid. <laughs> From a long, long time ago. I found it in my mother's things and I, I stuck it in here for safekeeping. And more, this was about the big freeze we had that on in 2021. Um, so I was documenting what happened there with the birds. And then I found this letter from my grandmother. And she was talking about she thought it was going to snow because it, the birds were so thick. And I wrote about that in this because the birds were very thick in our yard the, when we had this big freeze. So that went with that. But I think that's a, a nice way to... to save her letter and have it. I put it in this, um, what do you call those things? Um, page protectors to preserve it. I didn't want to glue it down because she'd written on both sides and I, I didn't want to destroy it in any way. I just wanted to keep it as it was. So that is where I'm keeping that. And then this was written about another, um, about Thanksgiving, about making a mince meat pie <laughs> and our cousin really loved it and then um, just a napkin from something and I recently stuck this um, greeting card that I found in this pocket to just keep it I think it's from my grandmother but I'm not sure her handwriting looks similar to hers but not exactly the writing on that card and then this is the tuck spot there but, um, and then I just wrote a little bit about the Christmas in 21. So there's a lot in here at this about Christmas and holidays, but there's also the collage pages and some other things in this book. So that is another example of kind of a traditional book, I suppose. It's got a sewn-in pages and a soft cover, which is nice. Now, this little book would probably be considered a true junk journal because it's made out of envelopes, junk journal mail. This was a bank statement. Came in that one. I still got bank statements. 
various um, things, you know, junk journal type things, envelopes, um, junk mail, fabric and things, pieces of card. Um, but I used some new things too. This was a this was a greeting card that I used the picture off of it because I thought it was pretty. I used stamps to stamp some words and some flowers on it. And um, that's probably a piece of scrapbook paper that is on the back of that. And I just made a little notepad. So it has it has places in here that could be written. You could write in this, or you could glue other pictures or things in here if you wanted to. So in that way, it could be a writing journal or an art journal, but it's also a junk journal because it's definitely made from a lot of junk, things that were just hanging around the house. This was a um, paint sample um, advertisement thing. That was part of it too. Um, stickers. So it's kind of like you start out making it with junk and then you add other things in that maybe aren't junk. But a lot of it is. I mean, some of these are out of the scrap pack, pack that I bought, so that's not necessarily junk. I bought it. But this lace was some of my mother's. That was too. This was a, another paint sample item. Washi tape, little uh, punched out but butterflies, stamped dreams, um, collage, just various things there. So anyway, that is a little example of a junk journal. It's small, but it's, it was a lot of fun to make. And this was inspired by Joy DeFee, and she has a YouTube channel and does really interesting things, um, a lot of collage and it's very precise in her, her work, and it's beautiful. But she made um, a similar piece to this, and I thought, oh, I like that, so I'm, I'm gonna try it. And it's made out of envelopes, three envelopes, and then packing paper and some scrapbook paper. This is scrapbook paper. And as I got into it, mine kind of evolved a little bit from where hers was because I added this postcard, and it was an actual postcard that my, was in my mother's collection of things, but I have no idea who this woman is, Miss Bird Fielder, but she lived in Sherman in the early 1900s, and I made a copy of the card, the front of it, the address side of it, and put it as my flip up, and then I started researching her and looking online and found out quite a bit of information about her, and so this book kind of take, took on the story of her life, in a way. I mean, I don't know what her story actually was, but she traveled a lot, so I have tickets, and she had um, kind of a can-do attitude, so I used this quote about whatever you can do or dream you can, begin it. Boldness has genius power and magic in it. And so, anyway, this became something she might have had, for instance. This could have been wallpaper that she used, and and various things in here. It just kind of had a, it had, to me, it has a story of what, who she was. So then after I did this book, I got inspired to do a bigger book. And this is another example of um, a folio type book that it's not page by page. It's, it's got flips like this and this and this, and it's got space to write in here old maps and various things in here, um, pockets, um, this is a picture of, that was in my grandmother, my other grandmother's, um, pictures of some, one of these guys I think is vaguely related to the family, but I'm not sure which one, but I thought it was interesting, and it kind of suited this, this idea of turn of the century travel by train, by ship, so there's the ship, um, seeing various places. So I, I put this in here. And this could be for taking on your trip and, and writing letters, envelopes in here and, and paper here for writing. And this flips out and there's 
um, little note pads and a little piece of ledger paper, things that someone might need to make a note or write down their expenses or something like that on a trip. And this one, I kind of felt like it was the masculine version of this one. This was feminine to me and this one was more masculine. So, um, postcards in here, just things you might need to correspond with somebody on a, on a trip. But I also put some secret spots in this one. I think most of them are on the other side. And I get confused every time I fold this back up. It's like that, I think. And on the back, um, this, this slides up under here for a secret place. It's a little tricky to grab these things out because it's kind of tight. Secret place to write there. And if you push it all the way in, then it really isn't seen at all. So it can be a hidden spot. And back here, this flips up or flips open and there's places to write here. But there's also a place underneath it that I put in a picture of, an, of um, this was actually my great grandmother's old boyfriend, Mr. Asa Friend. He, he lost out to uh, Homer Johnson. I mean, I'm sorry, Horace Johnson. It's just some little um, post-it note type papers there, just for a, a little something secret back there. Anyway, I think you get the idea. There's um, places to write in various little secret spots stuck in there. So there's actually quite a bit of writing space in this journal, even though it's not a typical um, book format. It's more of a folio format. And um, that's another style of, of journal. This is another one I wanted to show you. It is an accordion style journal. And this is based on one that um, Barbara of 49 Dragonflies did copying one by Susie. Susie Shaddy Soul, I think is her name. So this is my version of what they had created. Same number of pages. Um, similar items on the page. Little, for instance, this um, tag with the picture in the side is similar to what Barbara had done. And I think Susie had done something similar too. Just kind of a little secret thing there. I like the little secret things. And um, tags in, in various places. And then this one flips open and has a space here. I was going to say a space to write, but there's not any room to write on that. And um, that picture is my mother and her friend, her cousin, her friend cousin. A little butterfly there. And then the back, back to the front. There's pictures stuck in places, and um, there's a little space. My in camera cut off before I finished what I was saying. What I was saying was, there's a little space to write in this book, but not much. Some little tags and journaling places, and I suppose you could write here in some of these places if you wanted to. But mainly, I think this accordion style journal is more of an art book than it is a writing journal. I think of it as an art journal because it has a lot of decorations in it and interesting things to look at. And um, it was a lot of fun to work on. And I basically copied what Barbara had done when I was making it um, just to get the feel of making this kind of journal. Since I don't plan to sell it or do anything other than keep it for myself, I, I don't consider it to be something that I infringed on her ideas. I, I learned from her idea and I appreciate that, Barbara. That's some of the different kinds of journals that I've made and some of the ones that um, are true junk journals made from envelopes and things like that. This is an envelope, this is an envelope, this is based on envelopes. Some that are uh, pages sewn into a cover. But all of them have the one thing in common to me, that they are art journals because they're created and therefore, to me, that's art when you create something. Especially if you're creating it out of 
practically nothing. Things that other people would throw away. In a um, video that, it was a podcast actually, that Barbara Post with Louisa Heinzel of Junk Journal Art and with Marguerite Miller, they were discussing what is a junk journal and what are the requirements of a junk journal. And they all agreed that if your journal has even one piece of so-called junk in it, a junk mail envelope or a piece of packaging, you know, whatever like that, then it can be considered a junk journal. It's, it meets the requirement if it has one, even one piece of junk in it. So that's a pretty, pretty big leeway. I hope you've enjoyed um, seeing these different journals that I've made and that you got some inspiration from them. I will link below um, some of the links to um, my inspiration for some of these. And I will hope to see you next time. Thank you so much for watching to the end. And I hope you have a great day. Bye.